Hello students, under the topic sequencing, we shall first learn problems of type 1, that is processing n jobs through two machines. Problem, there are 5 jobs to be done in machine A and machine B. The processing times of the two machines are given in hours. So now, we are going to deal with problems where we will be having n number of jobs. So that n will be a uh, any value. Like uh, here, here the value of n is 5. And uh, two machines. So this is called a two machine problem. So now here the processing times of the two machines are given. The main aim of a sequencing problem is to find the appropriate order of a series of jobs to be performed in minimum time. So, we have to find the order in which the jobs has to be performed and also the total time to complete the job should be minimum. So, that is the aim of the sequencing problem. So, these are the processing times given. Now, what are, what are known as processing time? It is the time required by a job on each machine. Now, these are the jobs. Now, the job 1 takes 5 hours in mission A and 2 hours in mission B. So, the time taken to be performed in mission A and mission B is known as the processing times. Okay, now here the question is find the sequencing of the jobs. Also, calculate the total elapsed time and idle time of two machines. Now here first they are asking us to find the sequencing of the jobs. That is, they are asking us to find the processing order. The sequence in which, which the machines have to complete the job. That is, which uh, job has to be performed first. And uh, the next question is to calculate the total elapsed time. The total elapsed time is the time taken for completing all the jobs in by all the machines. And uh, they are also asking us to find the idle time. Now, what is idle time? It is the time in which a machine does not have a job. So, it stays idle. So, for how many how many hours a machine stays idle? That, that gives us the idle time of the machine. So, here we have two machines. So, we have to find the idle time of mission A and mission B. And we have to also find the total elapsed time. So, the first step is to find the sequencing of the jobs. That is the order in which the jobs has to be performed. So, in order to find the order, first we must check how many jobs are there. Now, if you see 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5, there are 5 jobs here. So, first we have to draw a table with 5 boxes in it. So, we have figured out this. Now, after that, we have to write mission A from the right and mission B from the left. So, why are we writing this? I will tell you now. Now, first what you have to do is, out of all the processing times, we have to check which is the least processing time. Now, if we check out of all these values, the least value is 1. So, 1 is the least processing time. And the job corresponding to 1 is 2. So, job 2 has to be performed. Now, this uh, jo uh, this least value is cor corresponds to which mission we have to check. It corresponds to mission A. So, job 2 has to be performed first. So, that is why I wrote mission A and mission B here. So, if a job, uh, if the least value corresponds to whichever mission, if it corresponds to mission A, we have to write from left to right. If it corresponds to mission B, we have to write from right to left. So, this is why I have written mission A and mission B here. Now, the job that we have got is job 2 and that is in uh, the least value was from mission A and so that job has to be performed first. So, I have written 2 here. Now, after now we have uh, written job 2. It is done. So, what we can do? We can just strike this off so that we will know that it is finished. Now, next out of the remaining values, which is the least value we have to check. Now, it is 2. So, this processing time 2 is the least, the next least and the job corresponding to it is 1.
and the mission corresponding to it is mission b so what we have to do now we have to write this job one under mission b so it is it should be from uh, right to left so here we have to write one now next we have to after finishing that we should just give a small strike here and then the remaining values are these values and the least is 3 the job corresponding to 3 is 4 and this least value is from which mission mission a so what we have to write do we have to write this 4 from left to right so next it will come here yes so after writing that we can strike this now next the remaining elements are 9, 10, 7 and 6 and out of these 4 the least element is 6 and the job corresponding to is 5 to it is 5 and the mission corresponding to it is mission B. So where we have to write this job 5 we have to write here from right to left so mission uh, the job 5 has to be performed in this manner and then the left out is job 3. Now, these are the two left out elements. The least of this is 7 and the corresponding job is 3 and 7 is from mission B and, and also the only left out box is this. So, job 3 has to be performed. Now, the jobs has to be performed in this order. That is, first we have to perform job 2, after that job 4, job 3, job 5 and job 1. So, this gives us the sequencing of the jobs. So therefore we are done with one, one uh, first question that is we have found the sequencing of the jobs. Now next they are asking us to calculate the total elapsed time. So to calculate the total elapsed time we have to draw a table. So let us draw that table now. Now this is the table to find the total elapsed time. So that is step 2. Now, first we have to write in the first column jobs and then we have to divide two columns for mission A and mission B. Under mission A, time in and time out. Under mission B, time in, time out. That is the time in which the job gets into that mission and after processing the time out for the uh, job in that mission. So, that is what these two columns refers to. Now, these jobs has to be written in the order that we have found. That is the sequence. At uh, We have found this sequence, right? 2, 4, 3, 5, 1. That sequence we have to take and write first. So, 2, 4, 3, 5, 1. Now, we shall calculate the time in and time out for mission A first for all the jobs. So, now... We shall calculate the time in and time out for mission A for all the jobs. Now the time in for the first job is always 0. So remember the time in for the first job is always 0. Now job 2 how long it takes in mission A? It takes to perform its job in mission A for 1 hour. So after performing 1 hour of job it comes out. So time out is 1 hour. So now this is finished. Now next is job 4. Now job 4 will wait for that 1 hour and it will enter the mission A after that 1 hour. So that 1 first we have to write here. So time in for job 4 will be this 1. So that we have to take and write here. Now how long job 4 uh, performs its job in mission A? It does for 3 hours. So what we have to do is 3 plus this 1. So, 3 plus 1. So, that will be 4. Now, it uh, this comes out in 4 hours. So, job 3 will enter now in this 4 hours. So, that 4 we have to take and write. Now, for uh, job 3, how long does it take? I mean, uh, job 3, how long does it take in mission A? It takes for 9 hours. So, what we have to do is this 9 plus this 4. So, it performs... It comes out at this time. So, 9 plus 4 which is 13. Now, job 5 will enter in what time? Time in will be this 13. This 13 we should take and write up. So, after writing this, how long does this job 5 perform in mission A? It does for 10 hours. So, what we have to do? This 10 plus this 13. So, that will be 23. So, that we have to write. Now, job 1 will enter. When will, uh, our, after how many hours it will enter in mission A? After 23 hours. So, this are, so 23 we should write. 
How long does job one perform in mission A? It performs for five hours. So for that five hours we have to add here. So if, uh, if you see here, five plus this twenty three, and so that will be twenty eight. Hope you have understood this. The first job that enters, it will enter in time zero. Then how long does it work? That performing time we should processing time we should take and write here. Then when this job enters, the it will enter after this time after the completion of the job two, right? So that one should come here. So one that one has to be added to the processing time of job four in mission A. So that is what we get here. Then write this here. Then add the processing time and this solution we have to write here. And add the processing time. The solution that we get, we have to write here, and we have to add its processing time. And finally, we will get this. And this is actually known as time consumed by mission A. So this is actually so twenty. This twenty eight. This last twenty eight that we obtain, right? So that will give us time consumed by mission. Ye. Now next we shall calculate the time in and time out for mission B. So very carefully you have to listen this. So let us see that now. All jobs has to be performed in mission one first, the first mission, and then only it can enter mission B. So after if we take one job first it it should finish mission A and then it should enter mission B. Always remember that. Now this job two first entered mission A. It worked there for one hour and after that it came out. After coming out, what it will do? It will enter mission B. So in mission B, after how long it will enter? The because one hour it has performed here. So after one hour it will enter. Mission B. So this one, this value, we should take and write first here. So th that that one we have to write. Now now we have to write the time out for mission B. So how long job two performs in mission B? For it performs for six hours. So what we have to do? That six has to be added to this one. So six plus one, and so that will be seven. Okay. <clears throat> So that will be seven. So that seven we have to write. After writing this, we should check the time out for the uh, for th that is this time out value and this time out. So here, if you see, we have four. Here it is seven. Which is the largest out of these two? Seven is the largest. So that seven we have to write as time in for the next job. So whichever is larger out of these two uh, the thing two timeouts, the seven and the next timeout of mission Y, that is four out of these two, whichever is largest, that we have to take and write because seven was the largest we have written here. Now job four, how long does it take in mission B? It performs for eight hours. So that eight has to be added to the seven. So eight plus seven. And so it will take fifteen hours over here. So it uh, performs job the time out for mission B. Ah, uh, job four in mission B is fifteen. Now we have to again check whether fifteen is greater or thirteen is greater. Out of these two, fifteen is greater. So the time in for the next job will be fifteen in mission B. So that fifteen we have to write. Now how long does job three perform in mission B? So if you see here, job three, it takes seven hours in mission B. That seven has to be added to fifteen. So we have to write seven plus fifteen, and the value is twenty-two here. Now to write the next time in, we should check. I told you, you know, we have to check whether twenty-three or twenty-two, which is uh, highest. So if we check the maximum of these two is twenty-three. So that twenty-three we have to write here. We should not write twenty-two. We should write twenty-three because this is the maximum. Now, how long does this job five perform in mission B? So, job five is performing for six hours. Now, that six hours has to be added to this twenty-three. So, six plus twenty-three. So, that is twenty-nine. So, we have to write that here. Now, again, we have to check whether twenty-eight is maximum or twenty-nine, which is the highest. Twenty nine is as the highest, and so we have to write twenty nine here. Now, after writing this, how long does this uh, job one take in mission B? It takes two hours. 
so add that 2 so 2 plus 29 and so that will be 31 and so this 29 okay this is known as time consumed by so I'll write it here this is the time consumed by mission B okay so this is time consumed by mission B and this 31 which is at the last this is known as the total elapsed time that is what we wanted to calculate right so this is the total elapsed time so now we have to conclude the problem so conclusion so first already we have found the sequencing now the total elapsed time we have calculated and it is equal to 31 hours so units are very important so 31 hours next in the question they have also asked us to find the idle time of mission a and mission b so if you see here in the question we have finished calculating total elapsed time now next they are asking us to find idle time of the two machines so let us calculate calculate that now first we shall calculate the idle time for mission a so idle time for mission a the formula for this is total elapsed time minus time consumed by mission A. So time consumed by mission A. And so that will be equal to what is the total elapsed time? It is 31 hours. So 31 minus the time consumed by mission A is 28. So that we have taken and written. So the time consumed by mission A is 28. So we have to uh, subtract these two and we have to write. So that is equal to 3 hours. Now next we have to calculate the idle time for mission B. Now idle time for mission B is equals to total elapsed time minus time consumed by mission B. So time consumed by mission B. Now what is the total elapsed time? It is 31. So that is 31 minus the time consumed by mission B. I have already shown you here. It is 29 hours. So we have to take that and write 29. So that will be equal to 2 hours. And so therefore the idle time for mission A is 3 hours and the idle time for mission B is 2 hours. So we have found the complete solution. Hope you have understood this problem. Thank you.